Music needs a composer to write a score and performers to play it and listeners to hear it. But what about space in which we experience music? The architecture of a concert hall and uh, the placement of the performers and the listeners are key components in how we experience music. Sound waves travel from the performers to the ears of the listeners. Like light, sound travels in a straight line. Sound may slow when it encounters a solid, which is known as damping, or it may reflect, which is known as an echo. If it reflects and scatters, then it is diffused. In a packed hall, there are lots of surfaces and not many flat ones. The closer the audience is to the performers, the clearer and less diffuse the sound, so they can better hear and appreciate their Mozart. The material of the hall also affects how sound reverberates and how well it reaches the audience members at the back. Thus, the performers in the concert hall are placed to optimize sound emanation and the audience is arranged for optimal sound reception. So what's the issue? Sounds like some basic geometry. Well, adding bodies into a room changes how sound behaves. The more people in chairs, the more scattering and damping. Modern concert halls are designed so that the unoccupied seats have very nearly the same absorption as that of an adult person sitting in that seat. When the performers are rehearsing and the hall is empty, they can draw rehearsal curtains to help make the sound more closely match how it will sound with a full house. In older concert spaces, uh, the sound can vary wildly depending on how many bodies are in the space and where they are located. Home stereo systems come with instructions on where to place your speakers because they know you want to have the best musical experience, but they don't know the dimension of your home. So they give a best guess on how to optimize sound and space so you can have the best Pink Floyd experience possible. This is not just a program to overcome. In a few unique cases, composers have written pieces that use variation in space to their advantage. The most famous example is Poème Electronique by Edgar Varese. At the 1958 World's Fair, Varese composed this piece with 350 speakers set up in a building shaped like the four stomachs of a cow. Very strange <laughs> architecture. <laughs> when the fairgoer walks through, the change in the sound emanation point affects how much diffusion or echo uh, occurs before the sound reaches the listener. And this is just as much a part of the musical composition as the notes or the timbres. In conclusion, music hinges on the composer's and architect's use of space. Next time you're at a concert or at home listening to your music, I hope you appreciate how space affects music, from Mozart to Perez to Pink Floyd.